An entitled Karen calls the police on me because she doesn't like the fact that I go out at what she considers weird times. She even goes as far as claiming that I'm selling illegal substances around the neighborhood and that I must be stopped at all costs. But once she was proven wrong and shown that she was completely lying, she slapped me in the face in retaliation, resulting in her getting arrested for slapping a kid. Here's what happened. So I'm a 16-year-old from Serbia, and I live in the building next to my grandmother's. Our buildings are divided into several buildings. Strange, but each entrance functions like its own building, as if we only share walls, and you can't exit one entrance to get to another without leaving the building. Now, I live in the entrance facing another building. If I go around it, the other entrance leads to my grandmother's apartment. Unfortunately, my grandfather passed away eight years ago, leaving my grandmother alone in her apartment. My parents, back then when this happened several years ago, saw one empty room and asked my grandmother if we could turn it into my private room because I needed privacy. Now, my grandmother was thrilled with the idea. After discussing it with me, we made the room. Since I followed my grandmother's rules and helped her, I didn't spend all my time at her place. Instead, I switched between apartments as needed. For example, I'd come home from school, leave my things, and then go to my grandmother's house to sleep. Then, I would return home in the morning to have breakfast. I had a sort of routine for when I went where, with an accuracy of plus or minus an hour. Now, just to reiterate, I live in the entrance facing another building. If I go around it, the other entrance leads to my grandmother's apartment. Directly in front of my entrance is another entrance. And above it on the window, at least 70% of the time when I went out, there was an elderly woman. She always looked at me somewhat grumpily as I passed by, and sometimes I would glance at her. But I had headphones on and often wore a hoodie, so I just ignored her. When I had the second shift, I usually got home at about 8.20, and then I went to my grandmother's house at around 10.30, even though sometimes there would be exceptions. Now, that woman was almost always there, but it never really bothered me. I mean, why would it? I only saw her for maybe 20 seconds a day. Well, once when I was leaving my house to go to my grandmother's without headphones or a hoodie, she finally said something that I honestly will never forget. She looks at me and says, You're leaving to get high again. I looked at her and I said, What? She said to me, Every day you go out with a hoodie on your head in the dead of night and I can clearly see what you're doing. I then looked at her and I said, What do you think I'm doing? And she responded by saying that I'm dealing some kind of substance. She then demanded to know what I had in my backpack. But I said to her, Well, not that it's any of your business, but I have a laptop and equipment. But this Karen was not having it. She looked at me and said, I think it's illegal substances. Open it and let me see it right now. But I refused to do it. I said to her, Leave me alone and I just walked away. Now, the next day, she was waiting for me outside the entrance. She said to me, What's in that bag? I looked at her and I said, You are a psychopath. She then said that if I don't tell her, she's going to call the police. So I responded by saying, Call whoever you want. I'm out of here. And I left while she was still yelling at me. The next day, two police officers were waiting for me outside the door with the Karen. The Karen then said, That's him. He's the local dealer. I looked at them and I said, What is going on? The first police officer said that they received a report that illegal substance trafficking was happening here. I then looked at the second police officer and I said, uh, is this for real? And they confirmed that even though it seemed absurd, they had to check it out. I then just said to him, okay, well, can you search me and let me go then? The first police officer said, we'll search you, but we won't let you go immediately because the lady said she saw you dealing. I said to them, that lady is crazy, but you know what? Do what you have to do. I just want to get this over with. The first police officer searched me while the Karen was yelling about me being a dealer. The second officer asked me how old I was and if I had an ID and I said to him, I literally went to the building next door. I don't even have a wallet. Can I go to my apartment to get it? I'll even leave my backpack with a laptop as collateral that I'll return. The first officer then said, do you live here? And I said, yes. And that's when he said he'll accompany me to my apartment, but he won't enter. Well, when I returned to my apartment, my parents asked what I had forgotten. I said, can you please get my wallet with my ID inside? I want to buy some juice, which by the way, I really did want to do that later. I returned to the police officer and my parents hadn't noticed anything quite yet. We returned outside and I showed my ID, which was valid. The second police officer explained that there's nothing in the backpack and that I had caused them no problems. The Karen then said, I know he has some substances. I saw him. I then said to her, where? Where did you see me? And at this point, the Karen made a mistake, pointing to a place under the cameras. I then said to her, okay, when was that? The Karen then gave the exact date that she thought she saw me doing something sketchy. So I looked at her and I said, great, we can check the cameras. Realizing that her plan backed
backfired, the Karen did the only sensible thing. She slapped me in the face. Well, to make a long story short, the first police officer handcuffed her and put her in the car while the Karen was screaming out loud. Now, for a small detail about me, I have a lot of pimples. So, if you slap me, I ended up bleeding a little bit, which made it look a lot worse than it actually was. Because honestly, it barely felt like a slap. The first police officer went and informed my parents. They came out and my mom wiped away the blood while my dad talked to the police. He asked the officer if he could send me to wash up. And the first police officer sent me away to do exactly that. Karen was convicted of assaulting a minor and misusing the police. Since we managed to hush up the whole story from the neighbors by some miracle, no one actually saw anything. The Karen received a punishment and a stern warning. Now, this Karen didn't go to jail, but she did get a good enough warning that if she did anything worse to me, then she would get a much worse punishment. But even after that incident, she could still be seen at her usual spot next to a window, glaring at me every time I walked by. Yeah, that entitled Karen was clearly just trying to cause problems. She saw some young kid coming in and out at hours that she didn't agree with, so she assumed the worst and accused you of something awful. Like, she really tried to convince the police that you were doing something so sketchy. And that part alone is seriously something that would have driven me nuts. She wasted two police officers' time, and then, when she was cornered because she knew she messed up, she slapped this kid in the face out of some kind of, like, weird retaliation. I kind of wish she got a bigger punishment, but I guess because she was old, she probably was able to get away with it to some extent. So good for you for standing up for yourself and not taking this garbage for a second. Because this entitled Karen was completely out of line for hitting you like that. Because you didn't do anything wrong, and you definitely did not deserve that. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. My husband is dragging his feet to move with me for my new job. And after talking with him about this, as well as trying to find some kind of deadline, or even some kind of compromise in some kind of way, I'm now at a point where I seriously don't even think he wants to be in the city we're going to move to. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. So my husband and I are both 33 years old, and we've been together for more than six years. We met in a city on the east coast of the United States, and we're both in training for our respective niche careers at the time. A few years in, my husband finished his training, but procrastinated at finding the next training position. He ended up with only one offer across the country on the west coast, because all other options were filled by the time he started his search. Now, I was mad, because I have been pushing him for about a year to search for a job, which is the normal timeline in his field, and I ended up having to find ways to continue my training on the West Coast to stay with him. Well, it wasn't easy, but I did it by working fully remotely. We agreed then that when I'm done with my training and need to move for jobs that I like, he'll have to pay back by moving with me. It is much harder to find a job in my field, and most people actually ended up giving up on this career. But I got lucky, and I finally found a job this year. Unfortunately, despite trying very hard, it is not on the West Coast, and is not in a big city as my husband would prefer. I still expected that he would move with me as we agreed upon this, even if it means switching to a remote job, which would still be in the same career, but just not as fun as an in-person job would be. From the day I got the precious job offer till now, he hasn't shown any hints of being happy for me, and was in fact visibly and verbally unhappy with the outcome. He kept talking about other opportunities that I was interviewing for, and browsing for jobs or housing around those places, and he was dragging his feet on his job search around my offer. He was more disappointed than me when I eventually got rejected by those better alternatives and of course not comforting me as a result. Now I have accepted the offer and he's still not engaging in my excitement for the new job and continue to nitpick the area that we're going to move to. He would say stuff like the restaurants are not good enough. I don't like the grocery store and nothing's happening here. And I've got to be honest, this has been giving me a lot of stress lately. Two days ago, he came up with the idea of negotiating with his current company to switch to mostly remote work. And this is an idea that I've been bringing up since before my job was finalized. But he kept saying that it was impossible. But now that I've accepted the offer, he finally seriously considered it, I guess. He planned to ask his boss about this in their meeting today and have been talking about this with me every two hours. The strange thing is, is that he initially proposed one week in person and three weeks remote. But every time he brought it up, the in-person time increased. In the evening, he weirdly asked me how much my father was away for work when I was young. We are planning to have kids
kids as soon as possible, and he knew my father being absent was the source of problems in my family. I told him it wasn't about the amount of time my father was away, but that he did nothing to make up for it when he was around. Well, as nighttime came around, his proposal progressed to two weeks in person and two weeks remote work, because that will be more likely accepted by his boss. I told him that 50-50 is a lot of time away from me, and he should treat this as a negotiation and not worry about what the boss wants, but rather what he wants. He somehow couldn't tell me what he wants and said that he has to think, with him grabbing a notebook and starting to write. Now, that is normal of him, so I just didn't push it and I just went to sleep. Well, today at noon, I was napping and I was woken up by him an hour before his meeting with his boss. He told me he is thinking about some options. The first would be one week and then two weeks because this would have the smallest impact on other people's schedule. And the second was a one and a half week and two and a half week schedule with his same rationale being about other people. I then interrupted him and asked why he is still talking about other people's needs. Like what happened to the one week, three week schedule? He said that's the next option. And I asked him what he wants again, but he just fell silent. Well, at that point, I finally exploded. I said to him, if he doesn't want to move, he can stay and we can get a divorce. I continued to repeat my complaints about the stress that he gave me, reminded him about our agreement, and told him that his progressive increase in time away from me in his proposals made me feel like he doesn't want to be with me. He argued that he is not increasing, but I reminded him what happened yesterday. He argued it was just two days more, to which I was like, what are you talking about? And I seriously just didn't even know what to say. He also said he didn't realize that's what he was signaling. I asked him why he's only talking about this with me right before the meeting, especially while I'm napping. He said he'll go delay the meeting, and I just suppressed the crazy amount of question marks that are about to explode in my brain. I told him I don't care anymore, and I pushed him to just get the meeting done. And that's where we're at right now. I mean, honestly, I'm kind of at a loss right now. It doesn't seem anything I said got through to him at all, and I still don't know what in the world he wants. What should I do? Wow, it really seems like your husband just doesn't care about your career, or he's just not willing to compromise and move with you for your job. Which, by the way, is incredibly unfair. I'm sure you've gone through a lot of compromises on your end, just to make sure he can get his training done and all this other stuff. And this is especially hurtful because you guys agreed to this in the first place. Like you said, hey, if I get a job offer and we gotta move, you're coming with me, right? And he said, oh yeah, sure, I'll definitely do that. But like, are you gonna do that? Like, is that even gonna happen? Because right now, it really seems like he's just completely lying. Like, now that he's faced with the reality of having to move for this job, he suddenly is like, oh man, these restaurants suck and nothing happens there. Which has only prompted his question about how much time he can spend away from you. And honestly, that is just so disappointing. The original poster went on to say that if he doesn't move, then she is definitely making sure she's not having kids with him. She's already accepted the job, so she doesn't really have much of a choice in that regard. And honestly, I completely agree with her. Having kids in an environment like this sounds like an absolute train wreck, and I seriously think that would just make things more complicated in this scenario. So hopefully this works out, and hopefully your husband is able to come to his senses and at least pretend like he wants to support you in some kind of way. Because right now, he's being very selfish, and this is really not fair for you and your career. Am I the jerk for telling my daughter that if she pays for her sister's college, then I will stop favoring her younger sister with my money? Here's what happened. Okay, so I'm going to try and be as clear as possible. My mother had a fund that was supposed to be for both of the grandchildren. She told me multiple times it was for both of the kids. She also informed the girls that they have money, but she unfortunately passed away unexpectedly. My oldest daughter was the only one on the fund, and it is legally hers. But here's the thing. She didn't share it with her sister, and she now has a huge head start in life with it. Due to this money, she has been able to go to college debt-free and is going to buy a house soon. My husband and I have been scrambling to give as much money as possible to our youngest daughter since she really did get screwed over. Even with all of our help, she still needs to take out student loans. My youngest daughter is working while in college, and she found a student job that gives free housing. But the issue is, is that she needs a car for it. So my husband and I are going to buy her a car because turning down this job will result in a ton of extra debt for her. Well, my oldest daughter found out about us getting the car and she is angry. She's upset with us favoring our younger daughter and that she never got a car from us. But I pointed out that she doesn't need help financially at all. We argued for a while and I had had enough. I told her that if she pays for her sister's college, then I will stop favoring her sister with my money. Well, my older daughter then called me a jerk and she isn't responding 
responding to anything that I sent to her. So honestly, I need to know, am I the jerk for the things that I said? What should I do? I don't think you're favoring your younger daughter at all. It sounds like your older daughter is literally working the system and taking money that's supposed to be for both her and her younger sibling. And sure, the fund only mentioned the older daughter, but it was very obviously expressed verbally from the grandmother while she was still alive that that money was supposed to be for both daughters. That it was not supposed to just go to one of them. And that part in and of itself is honestly so disappointing. Like the older daughter absolutely knows about this, I would imagine. And she knew that this money would go to her and her sister. And from the sounds of it, it really seems like a lot of money was available to be used. So to that end, I understand where the original poster is coming from, where they're like, wait a second, our other daughter is getting completely screwed out of money. So no, I don't think you're the jerk. I think your older daughter is being very selfish for not splitting the money, even though she knew where this money was supposed to go. Like, in my opinion, it would be different if that money was specifically meant for the older daughter, and like, that's the only person that really was supposed to have it. But in this case, it really was supposed to be shared. So for her to run off and be like, oh man, I can't believe you're getting her a car. All the while, she's got all this money to work with and has a giant head start in life. That is completely unfair, and I don't blame you for reprimanding her in the way that you did. Am I the jerk for reporting a local homeless woman to the police who stole and destroyed my food? Because right now, my girlfriend and my friends are calling me a jerk. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. So I'm from South Asia, and a few years ago, I moved to Australia for my master's degree. I completed it last year and have been working a full-time IT job ever since. Since I don't like grocery shopping, I rely on meal services, which provide you weekly meals and groceries on one day of the week. That way, you can cook and eat them anytime during the week. Usually, I get my box delivered to me anywhere between 3 to 6 in the morning, and I go and get it as soon as I can. This time, I got my delivery at around 8 o'clock, as there were some delays, and I went to take it at 8.15 before I could leave for work at 9 o'clock. However, when I reached downstairs, my grocery box was nowhere to be found. I asked the reception of my building, and they said they saw someone keeping it, but didn't notice anything after that, since the receptionist was an acquaintance. He offered to let me see the security camera footage to see what happened to it. In the footage, we saw a lady who came to use the lobby bathroom from outside, who then took the box when no one was looking, and sneaked away with it. The receptionist asked me to contact the police, just to lodge a complaint, and so I did. While talking to them, one of the other receptionists came back and asked what had happened, and as the footage was still on the screen, recognized the lady taking the box. She was a frequent visitor here to use the washroom. Now, on my street, a little down the road, is a homeless woman shelter, and he told me that he knows she lives there and offered to come with me to see if she was anywhere near there so I could get my box. Well, we get there to find the lady sitting outside the shelter with my box, trying to poke her finger from the side of the tape area to see what's inside. When we confronted her, she said that it was hers, but we said we have contacted the cops and we'll point them to her if she doesn't return it. She seemed like she was under the influence and angrily she just picked up the box and threw it at us, which caused it to open up and some of my ingredients fell out onto the floor and she started shouting profanities at us as well as telling us to leave. I picked up what was left of my box and I went back to my building. I then proceeded to complete the report with the police and inform them of the situation and also explained that we have footage of her stealing it. A few days later, I found out that they reached out to her and had taken her to the station, which had also caused the homeless shelter authorities to ban her from staying there ever again. And I thankfully also got a refund from the food company for my items. Now, when my girlfriend and my friends found out, they all started saying so much garbage and called me a jerk for reporting her. They are all Australian, so I don't know if this is some kind of like cultural thing, but I felt like I was justified in what I did. So honestly, am I the jerk in this situation? What should I do? Your friends and your girlfriend are completely wrong. You did not do anything wrong. And honestly, the fact that they want you to just let this kind of slide underneath a rug is insane to me and just absolutely inappropriate. Like, let's look at the facts real quick. This homeless woman not only stole your belongings, but she also destroyed it while also shouting obscenities at you and telling you to get lost. Meanwhile, she's the person who comes into the lobby to use the washroom every single day. Like, this is so backwards, it's not even funny. So I completely think you're justified in calling the cops, because if this can happen to you, it can literally happen to anybody. But don't get me wrong, I have a lot of sympathy for this homeless woman and her situation, but if you steal other people's property, then you absolutely deserve to get the consequences that come your way. That, in my opinion, is not the answer, and the fact that your friends are trying to justify it and be like, oh man, 
man, why would you do that? That is insane to me and that just doesn't make any sense. So no, of course you're not the jerk. You are absolutely justified in calling the cops on someone who stole from you. And anyone who could possibly say otherwise is completely misguided. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out easymode.com. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.